After five years, the final battle is finally upon us. It has been a journey, hasn't it? Here, Kiana, take my blessing. May it help you overcome the final... Wait, no, 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 no! It is safe to say that after chapter 35, I Lambda became public enemy number one in the eyes of a lot of Honkai players. <laughs> Breaking the fourth wall has always been a big contention point for many. It's a risky move. If not done properly, it can really ruin the setting of a story. There is no real formula for how to break the fourth wall, which is why there are so many varying reactions in the community. From people being happy because they finally felt recognized and appreciated, Arigato. Hyperion. Kanto. <laughs> to others who felt like it ruined the whole story. And don't get me wrong, it's fine if you don't like when a game breaks the fourth wall. It's fine if you don't want to self-insert in the story. It's fine to think that it's a cheap move, because, well, it is. But what elevates it to more than just that is how much the intention behind it resonates with the individual. That's why it can be meaningful for some players or a complete mood breaker for others. But even if you hated it, I think it's important to understand why the devs did this. So let's take a look at the meta storytelling of Honkai Impact 3rd and try to understand what exactly happened in chapter 35 and most importantly why. Before getting into all the juicy stuff, let's have a short recap. During chapter 35, I Hyperion Lambda recognizes the player as an observer from a different dimension. She uses a lot of meta knowledge that characters from the game are not supposed to have, such as mentioning version cycles, or alluding to the fact that there's no point in having more than 3 people participate in the battle against Kevin, since the players cannot control more than that. During the final battle, she brings a literal battleship out of nowhere, and she helps the main cast break Kevin's shield using the wishes of all the players from the Honkai Salvation Log event, which is an event that has no connection with the main story. Without context, it sounds like some total random bullshit. But what makes these moments meaningful for the players is the underlying message beneath all the fourth wall breaking. So, in order to understand that message, let's try to dissect every element of the equation, starting with the main culprit. When she first appears, I Lambda describes herself as a being born inside a pseudo-time crystal. But what in the name of the Cabbage Lord is a pseudo-time crystal? Well, to find an answer, we must look at the concept of time crystals in the place that no one wants to go to. Reality. Time crystals are a purely theoretical concept and there is no evidence of them actually existing. But even so, it's a very interesting concept. Crystals in three-dimensional space are formed by atoms arranged in a particular pattern that keeps repeating. Well, a time crystal is the same, but you also add the dimension of time, creating a repeating space-time system. Interestingly enough, the existence of crystals in nature is a manifestation of spontaneous symmetry breaking, which occurs when the lowest energy state of a system is less symmetrical than the equation governing the system. In other words, because Project Stigma distorted the space around the Earth and the Moon, it broke the symmetry of the time and form a crystal-like structure which encompasses both the past and the future of the project in a oscillatory system. Because Lambda was born in that pseudo-time crystal, she perceives time more like a pendulum that constantly goes back and forth rather than a straight line like we do. Even if she lives in the present, she already knows all the possible futures of Project Stigma. It's important to note, although, that Honkai also adds a lot of pseudo pseudoscience to already established concepts, so the way pseudo-time crystals work inside the game is highly exaggerated from what we know that is theoretically possible in reality. Now, the next question would be, why is she aware of the player?
People usually associate the Captain with the main character of the Captain Verse, which is a series of events that tell an overarching connected story about him traveling through the Sea of Quanta. While the Captain is mostly his own character, he is supposedly the player's avatar in the game. The timeline of the Captain Verse is a bit messy due to Hoyoverse making the chronology of the events hard to follow, but many theorize that there might be more than one Captain, or a single Captain existing at the same time in different periods of his life. Hmm, not very much? But for today, we'll be focusing on the version of the Captain that is purely the representation of the player that we see in the Honkai Salvation Log event. For context, that event is basically a giant fourth wall breaking quest in which Honkai Impact Earth gets corrupted by an independent sentience from the Sea of Data and the Captain must help Ai Lambda restore the game back to normal. This is also the same version of Captain that Ai Lambda addresses in chapter 35. If you pay close attention, after she realizes that we are observing her, she assumes the identity of Miss Administrator from the event. But why did this happen? Happen. She didn't have any memory of us before. Well, this is just a theory, but we know that Honkai likes to dwell a lot in quantum physics, right? Now, let me introduce you to the concept of quantum superposition. This concept states that any quantum system can exist in multiple states until it's measured by an observer. And guess who's an observer? If you said we, you get a cabbage. Lambda can exist as both a being born from a time crystal inside the confined universe of the game and also as the misadministration administrator from the event in a superposed state. After we interact with her, she assumes the identity of Miss Administrator. Basically, we measured her, and no, not in the way you're thinking. Okay, maybe that too, but that's beside the point. The idea is that because we perceived her as Miss Administrator, she became the Lambda from the event. And I know what you're thinking. Homo, you're on drugs, ain't you? Well, the joke's on you, because this is very plausible. Hear me out. Hoyoverse canonically made the player a higher dimensional being that can perceive and influence all the possible realities from their games. And, believe it or not, similar instances have been seen in the past. Remember the anti-entropy visual novel? During the scene in which Nancy Thomas Edison was trying to save New York, a talking dollar bill appears out of nowhere and starts conversing with her. This discussion is super random and it's never properly explained, but there are a few things that we can learn from it. First, Nancy was borrowing the power of an entity that exists in a higher dimension. Second, that entity operates in the conventional 11th dimensional space established by the string plus m theory. That means that the entity is an observer from a higher dimension, capable of watching every possible word and timeline in the Honkaiverse. Now, the only candidates that come to my mind would be the Eons from Honkai Star Rail or the being that Sue met at the end of the second key manga. So, we know that the concept of higher dimensional observers has been established long ago. Then, what makes us, the players, different from those entities? Especially since Hoyoverse is not a stranger at introducing us randomly in their stories. Not gonna say too much, but even in Honkai Star Rail, at one point, one of the characters addresses us directly. And I do not mean the player avatar, I mean us, the players behind the screens. Oh, and there is also this moment in ER when we planted a random idea in May's head when she first met Alicia. So, next time when you have a bad day, try to remember that you are basically a godlike being in the Honkaiverse. I remember a few weeks ago reading this Reddit thread by user OpenLight. Although I have a bit of a different interpretation, the idea they propose here is very interesting. In the past, I tried to explain the concept of finality by introducing the idea of a Honkai Onion, which is a multi-layered way to explore the concept through the perspective of multiple characters and their interpretation. 
Well, allow me to offer you today a new layer that wasn't presented in my previous video. If you remember the idea of finality explained through Kevin and Project Stigma's perspective, the cocoon of finality can be described as a higher dimensional being that wants to embrace humanity. In other words, the cocoon of finality could be seen as an observer from a higher dimension that wants to self-insert into a story by mimicking it. This is also why Kiana calls it a mirror. It takes on human concepts and creates her sure authorities based on them, hoping that they can somehow embrace humanity for him, since the gap between dimension is too big for him to do it directly. Unfortunately, humanity is plagued by many negative emotions, and the reflections that the cocoon creates result in her shores that destroy the story instead. It was only when the cocoon reflected Kiana that he was able to find a way to successfully insert into the story. And you may ask, Homu, how is this relevant to the topic? Well, one of the new perspectives that this theory brings is that both the players and the cocoon of finality are observers from a higher dimension, but the cocoon went further and broke the barrier between the story and the reader. Due to the barrier being broken, which is represented by how the cocoon is portrayed between two different dimensions, we were also allowed to influence the story in our own way. As beings of similar status, we created I Lambda that through the pseudo time crystal made Hyperion appear out of thin air and aided the Valkyries in their final fight against Kevin. The story of Honkai was always about foreign observers trying to self insert themselves into the story. Let's remember who Hoyovers are at their core. Their slogan, Tech Otakus Save the World, is not just some random words thrown together. Well, it is, but they mean it. They are otakus. You can literally take a picture of that way from 10 years ago and put it above the definition of the word in the dictionary. They are the kind of people who like to self-insert themselves in the media that they create and consume. If you partake in the otaku culture, you know damn well that the majority of anime is made with the idea of inserting the viewers into the story. Most anime have a bland and quiet protagonist, inclined to have a lawful good nature, meant to serve as a blank canvas for the people watching to insert themselves. Because you know that if they give them too much of a personality, people won't be able to relate to them. Does this ring a bell? That way also appears in every game they make in one form or another. Not to mention that they love to throw their logo in every goddamn place they can. They are also players at the end of the day, and they make their games to fulfill their own fantasies as well. Just like I am about to fulfill my own fantasy right now and ask you to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Thank you very much, now let's move on. During the first act of chapter 35, I Lambda refers to us as the beginning and end of time, the source of all stories. But why? We are not creators, we are just random people that are here to witness the story. And while true for the most part, the developers tried to tell us that even if we are strangers with no direct connections to each other, just by experiencing the game we became a part of it. To us, the lives of the characters are just an illusion. But even illusions can leave their shadow in our hearts. Honkai Impact Third is a story about life, which was inspired by the the lives of the developers themselves. It's a story that teaches us about kindness and loss, about moving forward and believing in the beauty of this imperfect world. It's a story born from real life, meant to make a positive change in another real life. That's why we are the beginning and end of all stories. Stories are not just stories anymore, they become a mirror and reflect ourselves. What's important is the emotion that we all feel together and that connects us through this journey called Honkai Impact Third. We are happy because we see happiness in the story, and we are sad because we see sadness in the story. 
That's why Kiana calls the Kokuno finality a mirror, and this reflection is evident even in the community. Why do you think that we like so much to see new players go through the story for the first time and see them experiencing the Great Depression? Because we want to see others experience the same feelings as us. Even if we do not know each other directly, these feelings somehow connect us all. Now, in exchange, our emotions also reflect inside the story in the form of a blessing for the characters. Lambda's existence and all the fourth wall breaking is also a meta discourse. I think that this is also where the gap between some players and the developer's intention lies. Some people didn't want to see a discourse like this in the story. They wanted to experience the story as it was. Also, the fact that it was done during the ending of Kiana's story made it feel even worse. And I totally agree that it was intrusive and they could have done it better. But I also think that some people are way, way too harsh with them. In a recent documentary released on their YouTube channel, the developers go through some of the things that happen behind the scenes and talk about the overall process of developing the game. Honkai was a gamble that they couldn't afford to lose. So, from their perspective, the players that supported them are really important and they wanted to repay them and let them know that they are also part of the game. Through the documentary, they emphasize that this journey is one that we created together. It's their way of saying, we appreciate you and we want to acknowledge you, because at the end of the day, this is a story about all of us. Hoyoverse tries to experiment a lot with Honkai Impact 3rd, and sometimes they just don't hit the mark in the way they want to. But for me, this exact thing is what makes me appreciate them more. They do not put themselves into a corner and do things that they know for sure that are safe. They try new things and they always look to push themselves and the game further. So let me take this moment to express my sincere gratitude. Thank you Honkai Impactor developers. I cannot wait to see what you'll bring us next.